welcome back to our kitchen. If you're new here, I'm Shane with the Rosemine Cottage Girls, and today we're mixing that up a little bit. We are going to be freeze drying, which we've not shown on our channel before, so I'm really excited to get into it with you. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. froze some chicken slices last night. We, we went to Sam's Club and picked up a couple of roast chickens and then broke them all down and got them on cookie sheets. Silicone mats are really helpful if you're going to pre-freeze like that. And pre-freezing your food help, really helps to cut down your processing time because freeze drying can be a very long process. Okay, we're just going to lay it on the tray. You don't want to go too deep or too thick. Step down over the trays. You want to avoid anything that's super fatty, also, because it will not freeze dry properly. There we go. A couple little empty spots here and there. So we have a medium freeze dryer and we use um, silicone mats over our uh, trays. I'll link in the description to where you can get them. So our freeze dryer, because it's a medium, has four trays. We've found about one chicken can fill a tray depending on how big your pieces are. This batch is a little bit more slices than dices, so it's going to take a little bit more room. And you're want to, going to want to keep, if you pre-freeze, you want everything that goes in your load in the freeze dryer frozen. If you're using fresh, which is going to take longer, make sure it's all fresh and none of it's frozen, otherwise it messes up with it. Get in there. Get in there. I think my favorite thing to freeze dry is eggs. Such a great way to stock up on eggs when you are having an abundance of them in the spring. Alright, add a chicken and then go grab something else out of the freezer and finish loading it. Alright, so I have some sliced baby portobellas here that are pre frozen. Remember, you want a kind of thin layer stack them up too much. It's okay if they touch, but I may end up pulling some of those off. Anyway, here we go. Got one last string fill and you might be asking yourself why you would want freeze-dried mushrooms or chickens. And the answer is pretty simple. It's really delicious. It's a great way to store your leftovers. And it's also really nice to have available if you're going hiking or whatever, you can just bring it with you and it just takes some water and you have instantly delicious roast chicken dinner. It's super easy, it's great if you are tend to have lose power, it's great if you just need a quick meal. It's very similar to canning, so you could just pull it out of the can and heat it up. Well, you just pull it out of your bag or you can dry can it in a jar and you instantly have the same results. And it, for the most part, it comes out tasting completely fresh, just with a more intense flavor. So for the last tray, I am going to throw a shrimp on it. I need to grab something to open this up. I'll be right back. So these are Nature's Promise shrimp, and they're all ready to go. Just spread them out a little bit. I'm trying to get them a little bit broke apart so they won't catch on the top of our freeze dryer. There we go. These are ready to load up in our freeze dryer. And then we will show you how to get it started. And then we'll be back in about 
mm, tomorrow <laughs> sometime so we are in our the room where we have our freeze dryer and we're gonna just slide our trays in we have pre-cooled this thing i'm gonna go grab the other two trays really quick and then we'll just get it started we got our last two trays right here pop them in Okay. You want to make sure the seal is nice and down and there's nothing stuck to it. Close the door, lock it, and you're going to come back here and close the drain. Make sure you get it quite closed. Don't leave it open, leave it open and then continue. You're done. We're down. And we'll be back when that is done pre or freezing, vacuum freezing and drying and then extra drying. So, we'll be back to pull it out. So while our batch that we just put in is processing, I thought I'd go ahead and show you another batch that we finished a couple days ago. So this is what it's gonna come out looking like. It's very dry, it will crumble if you put too much pressure on it, but it pretty much holds up its shape. So just you can reconstitute this with broth or water, or really anything you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and use some hot water from our little tea kettle. And that is just gonna sit there and rehydrate. All right, so while our chicken is rehydrating, let's talk about how to store this chicken that you have processed. You do not want it to rehydrate when you're not ready for it. So it immediately needs to go in somewhere dry that's gonna hold out the moisture and the oxygen. So for long-term storage, Mylar is the way to go. This will last up to 25 years as long as what you're using and doing isn't super greasy and then it's not gonna last that long. Um, Oxygen absorbers, mylar, and then we're going to want to seal it. Oxygen absorbers are not going to scrunch it in like a vacuum sealer would. It's just pulls the oxygen out once it's sealed. You need to work really fast with oxygen absorbers. Oxygen absorbers start working really fast and they're only good for 15 minutes out in the open air, so you need to work fast with those. So, if you're not as interested in long term term storage, bleh, um, you can do a carrying jar and you can vacuum seal your jars. You're going to want to store these in a cool, dark place. Um, again, these are not going to last as long as the Mylar, but if you're not interested in it lasting 25 years, you just want something to grab off the shelf and cook for dinner, this is a good way to go. Now, my favorite option is the bucket. We store a ton of our freeze-dried chicken in here so that we can, when we're making soup or whatever, just pull what we need out, throw it right in the soup. It will reconstitute in the soup. And we don't have a ton of jars to deal with. So we get our buckets at Firehouse Stud. They sell off their buckets that they are done with. These are pickle buckets and we just wash them. Throw some oxygen absorbers in the bottom and then fill it up as we go. Um, this is not going to last as long as the Mylar. We're okay with that. Firehouse Stud sells these. These are their pickle buckets and they sell them. We get them for about $5. It may vary where you live. Um, but they use the money to support their fire departments and buy equipment for them. So that's a great way to give back to your community while still store using, recycling something to store your food in. Our chicken has been sitting here and it has rehydrated. It is nice and tender. You could never tell that this was freeze dried. So let's try it. That is so good. It has the exact flavor that it had before you freeze dried it. It's even warm because we put the warm water. It's delicious. You could eat this just like this or you know, throw barbecue sauce on it or something, throw it on a bun. It's really, really good. All right, so we rehydrated the chins on chicken. Let's try some mushrooms this time. I'm just gonna do a couple. We'll read that into this in a minute. Add some hot water. Get in there. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt. I'm just gonna let that rehydrate. Now I'm just gonna add a little lid to lock in the steam for those mushrooms, and we're just gonna let them sit for a bit. Okay, so while our mushrooms are rehydrating, we're going to go ahead and reseal this. This is a food saver vacuum sealer, and then this is an attachment that we bought to go with it. That will, that we have a small mouth and a wide mouth jar attachment. We're just going to pop that over the lid. And then... Great for storing your dried goods like this. Okay, 
So you don't technically need a ring for the top of your jars when you're vacuum sealing it. I like to keep it on there just so nothing accidentally pops it loose. It just adds an extra layer of protection. Um, using a jar over mylar is helpful because if you've got a rodent problem or you don't want to keep micromanaging and make sure you don't have a rodent problem where you're storing your mylar bags, which they can chew through, they can't get through your glass. So this is really helpful. It doesn't last as long as the mylar, but again, if you're not super worried about that, if you're eating through your pantry quickly and you're just looking to keep shelf stable staples handy, this is a great way to go. Okay, so it's been about five or six minutes and our mushrooms are nice and hydrated. Probably can't see that from there. We'll get a closer shot in a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and try one. That is really good. The salt gave it that nice little kick. It tastes like a nice mushroom. The hot water kind of cooked it, so the fresh mushroom tastes like a cooked mushroom. It doesn't taste sauteed, of course, but it is really good. It's got great flavor, perfect for adding back in. We actually like to add these to our mushroom soup. Good to go. All right, so this is our Harvest Right Mylar sealer. It came with our um, Harvest Right machine when we got it. And it's got settings on the side to adjust to your Mylar bags. Um, thickness and you're just going to line it up. These have a little notch right here so you're just going to line it up so that it doesn't go below that and there's a little light on the side and you're going to hold it down until the light goes off and it's sealed. Ta-da! Thank you so much for joining us on our freeze drying adventure. We hope you learned something and enjoyed it. Until next time, we'll see you in the kitchen.